His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at his residence in Abu Dhabi the Vice President, Prime Minister of the United Arab Emirates and ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. During the meeting, the two sides reviewed their country's strong historical relations of cooperation, emphasizing their mutual keenness to further develop these ties to fulfill the aspirations of both nations and peoples across all fields. They also discussed regional and international developments, noting the importance of promoting peace, security and stability for the prosperity of the region. His Royal Highness the Deputy King, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, met with the UK Ambassador to Bahrain, Alistair Long, at Gudaibiya Palace. The Deputy King affirmed that long-standing relations between both countries are based on solid foundations and strategic partnerships. He highlighted the Kingdom's commitment to advance the Bahrain-UK partnership across various sectors to achieve mutual aspirations. His Royal Highness said that joint visits and agreements have consolidated the multi-sector bilateral collaboration currently in place. The meeting also discussed the latest regional and global developments where both parties affirmed that security and peace are the basis of development. The Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Hamad bin Faisal Kabi, attended that meeting. <coughs> The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed al met with the Egyptian Prime Minister, Dr. Mustafa Madbouli, at the government headquarters in the new administrative capital in Egypt. The Speaker affirmed that Cairo and Manama are bound by historical relations, which are also distinguished by the deep-rooted fraternal ties between His Majesty the King and Egypt's President. For his part, Prime Minister Madbouli affirmed Egypt's support to Bahrain's efforts to host the 33rd Arab Summit. He hailed the development of their country's relations, asserting that they receive considerable attention from the two leaders. Under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Ministry of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Waqf, and in cooperation with the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, the concluding ceremony of the 4th Bahrain International Web-based Holy Quran Recitation Competition, or Global Reciter, was held at the Cultural Hall in the presence of the President of SCIA, Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa. The SCIA president thanked His Majesty for patronizing the competition, which comes as part of Bahrain's initiatives to serve Islam and the Holy Quran and reflects His Majesty's keenness on strengthening Bahrain's Islamic values and identity. Sheikh Abdurrahman congratulated the winners, wishing them success and expressed aspiration, appreciation for the efforts of the jury. He also thanked the Ministry of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Waqf for organizing the competition hailing the vital strategic partnerships with the Ministry of Information and the Information and E-Government Authority. He expressed appreciation for the role played by the competition sponsors and honoured the partners, sponsors, jury and winners. <coughs> The Emir of Qatar, His Highness Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, received in Doha the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abd Latif Zayani, who is on a visit to Qatar as part of his tour to Arab countries. His Highness the Emir hailed the Minister's visit, commending the deep rooted relations and the keenness on developing them in all fields. His Highness asked the Minister to convey his greetings and appreciation to His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister and his wishes of good health and happiness to His Highness and of progress and prosperity to Bahrain. He wished Bahrain, led by His Majesty the King, success in hosting the 33rd Arab Summit and that it produces outcomes that enhance Arab cooperation and protect the interests of Arab countries. For his part, Dr. Zayani conveyed to His Highness the Emir the greetings and appreciation of His Majesty and of His Royal Highness and their wishes of good health and happiness to His Highness and of progress and prosperity to Qatar. He highlighted the growth of relations for both countries' interests.
The Prime Minister of Qatar, Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdurrahman Al Thani, received in Doha the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif Al Zayani. They discussed their country's brotherly relations and means to further cooperation for the benefit of both countries and enhance cooperation and integration between GCC countries. They discussed the ongoing preparations for the 33rd Arab Summit to be based by Bahrain on May 16th. The summit's work program and the topics scheduled to be included in the agenda of the meeting of Arab leaders. <coughs> Under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the General Federation of Workers' Trade Union held a ceremony on the occasion of International Workers' Day. The Minister of Labour, Jamil Hamidan, delivered a speech in which he affirmed that Bahrain continues its developmental march according to the vision of His Majesty the King, hailing His Majesty's issuance of a royal decree pardoning a number of convicts on the occasion of the Silver Jubilee of His Majesty's accession to the throne. He commended the directive of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Prime Minister, to provide training programs and job opportunities for the pardoned so they can contribute to the national development process. For his part, the chairman of the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Samir Nas, praised the efforts of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister to maintain labor gains and enhance cooperation and dialogue between production parties. He lauded the national achievements of Bahrain's workers at all levels. The minister honored the outstanding workers who have been selected by the General Federation of Workers Trade Unions in appreciation for their efforts and contributions to Bahrain's comprehensive development. The Minister of Youth, uh, Rawan Tawfiqi, chaired the meeting of the Youth Empowerment Committee in the public and private sectors. Tawfiqi affirmed that the process of empowering the youth in Bahrain is proceeding according to strategic plans developed by the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, led by the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, that aim to utilize the youth's capabilities and skills. She said the committee has submitted leading initiatives that contributed to enhancing the youth status and empower them in many high positions in the public and private sectors. The minister noted that the committee has created a framework and vision for the sustainability of youth empowerment. She hailed the positive interaction from the public and private sectors on the Exceptional Youth Initiative that was launched on the occasion of Bahrain Youth Day and the keenness of institutions to honor the youth. During that meeting, the Youth Supporter Initiative was also approved. The committee discussed the results of the Exceptional Youth Initiative, the formation of a volunteer work team for the committee, ideas of the committee members and future visions for the committee's initiatives. In Jazz Bahrain successfully concluded uh, the 16th Young Entrepreneurs Competition, which was held under the patronage of the chairperson of Injaz Bahrain, Her Highness Sheikh Hessa bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and showcased the entrepreneurial talents of contestants from various high schools and universities in Bahrain. Over 940 students participated in this year's competition, and among them, 475 students excelled in passing the Entrepreneurship Skills Program. Competitions were held between the teams for 12 main awards from different categories, including the Best Special Impact Award, the Best Product of the Year, and the Best Company of the Year at the high school and university levels. This year, the competition also included six distinguished awards in recognition of exceptional achievements. The winning teams of the Best Company of the Year 2024 award from the high school and university categories will represent Bahrain in the upcoming regional competition for young entrepreneurs organized by Inja Al Arab to be held in November 2024. I'm honored um, to have me and my team receive three prestigious awards from the Injust Company program ceremony. Um, we have worked really hard on this product and on this company and we have put so much passion and effort into every single piece of it. And we are so glad that it's paid off. This journey, the prize is not just the award. This journey's prize is the amount of commitment and passion that goes into it and develops you as a person. 
This experience was very amazing. It helped us uh, change our mindset from students into entrepreneurs. Our project was turning gate pits and integrating them into everyday life uh, products. And, and it was an amazing experience. I would like to thank the Enjaz company for this amazing uh, opportunity and Her Highness uh, Sheikha Hissa bint Khalifa Al Khalifa on this amazing opportunity. And today we won the best company of the year and hopefully in October 2024 we move on to best company of the year for worldwide and we're going to be going to Dubai and hopefully we win something there. I want to start off by thanking Enjaz and Jaws provided us with such amazing opportunities from improving our leadership skills, even our communication skills. And all of that caused my team and myself to become a family. So I want to thank Jaws for that communication that they built amongst myself and my fellow classmates and colleagues. So thank you. In light of the recent incident that took place at one of the company's uh, tanks in Citra Tank Farm following the exceptional weather conditions and heavy rains in the kingdom, Babco Refining announced that the affected tank has now been successfully and gradually emptied, declaring the state of emergency at the company now over and operations back to normal as of yesterday. The company added that a full comprehensive evaluation of the affected tank has begun along with comprehensive maintenance work as per international standards and regulations. They said that with resuming normal operations and in cooperation and coordination with the General Traffic Directorate, the Civil Defense Affairs and other relevant entities at the Ministry of Interior, Omel Saad Avenue has been reopened after being closed following the incident. Babco Refining extended its thanks to the outstanding support received from all government authorities and entities that helped in successfully and safely resolving this incident and to the citizens and residents for their cooperation in observing safety procedures. While the cooperation and coordination between all relevant authorities, the General Directorate of Civil Defence at the Ministry of Interior and the security and safety teams at Babco Refining Company resulted in the completion of the treatment of the technical defect that occurred in one of the company's tanks in Citra as the General Directorate of Civil Defence was taken to follow the highest standards of protection and safety represented by the disinfection and handling of hazardous materials branch. The reports related to the repercussions of the oil tank leak were resolved and conditions returned to normal. The efforts of the General Directorate of Civil Defence in partnership with relevant authorities aim to protect lives and properties as the safety of citizens and residents are a top priority. <coughs> International news now and uh, the president of Algeria, Abdel Majid Taboon, received the credentials of Ali Jassa Mohamed Al Aradi as the ambassador plenipotentiary of Bahrain to Algeria in the presence of Algeria's Minister of Foreign Affairs and National Community Abroad, Ahmed Attaf. The ambassador conveyed greetings from His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to President Taboon, as well as their wishes for progress and prosperity to Algeria and its people. He expressed pride in representing Bahrain in Algeria, affirming his keenness to contribute to strengthening the deep-rooted relations between the two countries. President Taboon requested the ambassador to convey his greetings to His Majesty and His Royal Highness, as well as his wishes for continued progress and prosperity to Bahrain and its people. He also wished the ambassador success in carrying out his diplomatic duties to serve the interests of both countries. The discussions of the Arab Charter Committee on Bahrain's human rights file at the headquarters of the Arab League have successfully concluded. The committee listened to the members of the Bahraini delegation who answered the committee's questions with transparency. A symposium was held following the session 
in which the Bahraini delegation reviewed the achievements in human rights through the presentations of the ministries of interior and of foreign affairs. The Ministry of Interior's delegation affirmed the success of the Royal Vision through the penal code and alternative penalties, especially open prisons, which is considered an unprecedented step in the correctional system. A documentary film was screened on Bahrain's model of alternative sentencing and open prisons, which received positive reactions. The attendees affirmed that Bahrain's law of alternative sentencing and open prisons is a successful working method for the benefit of citizens and their reintegration into society. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs, presented, represented by the Human Rights Advisor, provided an explanation of the main aspects of the National Plan for Human Rights 2022-26, including legislation, laws and rights. The chairman praised the Bahraini delegation's openness and responsiveness to all questions, which affirmed that Bahrain is a leading country in making effective human rights achievements. The Arab League for Human Rights praised Bahrain for its achievements in human rights. Mm-hmm. <laughs>